kitchen I am Calvin and everybody say it this is my kitchen I am here today again with the maestro and the chef because only one of us went to culinary school Mark A. Norwood he did a wonderful recipe on one of my uh, episodes of um, Calvin's kitchen he did German chocolate cake how to make German chocolate cake <laughs> so you can just kind of comment or reach out to me on this video make a comment and we'll I'll put you in touch um, but anyway today uh, we're gonna make a, a holiday tradition but it's a side dish that can go anytime but in the spirit of the holidays let me just uh, which holiday doesn't really matter this is Bailey's um, if you're wondering I like to sip on Bailey's during the holiday season and cook. But anyway, we're going to make a famous side dish, and it is cornbread dressing. Yeah, I'm going to stop talking. Um, he's going to talk me through it so we can get this cornbread dressing going. And uh, yeah, I guess let's get started. Let's right. just go. Some people call it stuffing, but in my neighborhood, we call it cornbread dressing. And um, one of the first things we're going to do to get it going is to cut up our vegetables. Uh, we're going to do what we call the mirepoix. Some people call it the holy trinity. It's celery, bell pepper, and onion. All right, so we're going to just de-seed it, and then we're going to put it in the food process. You have a special way you de -seed. I'm going to learn. You do a culinary chef. I just know how to cook a few things. Right. Can I just rip that you out? You can just rip that out. I think I see a seed. All right. All right. All right. Just a just a rough truck uh, chop because we're gonna put it in the food process. Okay. That good? That's good. You don't even have to chop it that small. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And I like the part with those the the leaves on them that gives them some good flavor. Good texture, good color. So you keep the leaves? I do, yes, I do. Okay. So, absolutely. so when I grew up, we didn't have dressing. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a Yankee as they say. I'm a I'm a Natey alien, New York Atlanta. And um we call it stuffing. And it was usually like stovetop stuffing. <laughs> I think uh who does a whole skit? Dave Chappelle does a whole skit on stovetop stuffing. You should uh, check it out on his last uh, Netflix special. But anyway, we had stovetop stuffing. So when I came in the South and everybody said dressing, I was like, stuffing, whole different thing, whole different dish. Um, dressing is made separately in a pan, whereas stuffing, we made it in a pot, put it in the turkey or the chicken or whatever. So yeah, whole different ball game. All right, so I chopped up the onion. Uh, so you keep the leaves, huh? Yes, I do. Wow, I always just take them. these little tips off right here. Okay. Keep the rest. So we're using about four stalks of celery, one whole onion, one whole bell pepper. Rough chop? Rough, rough chop is good. That's good. And then chop up the uh, red bell pepper. Okay, let me explain. Uh, in the recipe, we're gonna use some bread. Day-old bread. So I had some hot dog buns. We're gonna use those. You could use white bread, wheat bread, whatever bread you eat. So we're gonna pulse this up first, and then we'll do our vegetables. Um, that's good. All right. And then we already have some uh, stuffing. This is what Calvin was talking about. A lot, of, a lot of people use this for what they call cornbread stuffing. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're just going to add our breadcrumbs to this. This is seasoned breadcrumbs right here. So and we're going to add our dill bread. So just add that. You know, no, we don't know. No. Uh, Put this in here. Oh, yeah. OK, OK. So of course, you're going to start with your classic recipe of um, cornbread. Uh, some people use the mix. Some people make it from scratch. I make mine from scratch. Two cups of uh, corn meal self rising i put a little baking powder in it an egg i use buttermilk uh, and a little oil of butter and then just mix that up real good bake it and you can bake that a couple of days in advance okay so as i did here i already have it uh, 
you know, broke it up, put it in Ziploc bags, so you can do that ahead of time. All right, so let's go ahead and do a, uh, rough, a chop on the yeah, vegetables. On vegetables. Yes. By the way, the music you're listening to is by Mark. Then we're gonna saute the vegetables in about a stick of butter. Use real butter, that's my choice. Until they're tender, so we'll saute them about 10 minutes. And I put about a tablespoon of thyme in here as well. We'll season this as well, so we kind of layer the flavor. To it. Yes, about a stick of butter. And then um, we can also add a little salt and pepper to this, just a little bit. Add fresh cr crushed pepper, uh, pink Himalayan salt. Fantastic. There you go. Grandma says we gotta see the pepper. If I don't see the pepper, the pepper's not. <laughs> Obviously, this is just one part of the meal. Another major part. Do you guys like to make your turkey? Do you make turkey on Thanksgiving? Absolutely. Yes. Do you do anything special to your turkey? No, I don't. You just, just roast it? Do you brine it? Do you sit it in no, salt water? I, I do season it, but I, I don't brine it. You don't brine it. Right. Yeah. So I've made it several different ways, ladies and gentlemen. I have brined it and put it in a solution of salt and sugar uh, for several hours, sometimes overnight. But my most popular turkey amongst the people was uh, like a bacon wrapped turkey. Now, how could you go wrong? Anything you add bacon to <laughs> tastes delicious. So it was like a, a, a bacon wrapped turkey. But then the next best turkey I've had was blazing Cajun turkey wings. Yes. Right? Well, okay. oh, fantastic. If you're in the Atlanta area and you want to order a fried turkey for the holiday season, blazing Cajun turkey. I think it's blazingturkey.com. I think that's the website, blazingturkey.com. I'll put that up on the screen. But uh, yeah, that's the best fried turkey I've ever had. It's excellent. Once this has sauteed down about 10 minutes, I'm going to add some turkey drippings to this. So after you've cooked your turkey, turkey breast, turkey wings, whatever, you'll usually have some what we call drippings. And this will add a lot of flavor to your dressing. So um, I'm going to add this once this cooks down a little. But so turkey dripping. So you made a turkey and just saved the drippings. I saved. Did you yes. freeze? Did you freeze it? Or? I froze that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, I can't buy turkey dripping. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I kind of grew up where you didn't throw away anything. So like the the bread that we pulsed, if you had leftover toast, you could use that. If it's stuck in the corner of the refrigerator, take that out and use it. The butt bread. Right. Exactly. For good turkey. Dressing. Who eats the butt bread? Put it in the comments. I eat the butt bread. I that's all that, that's what I got. I eat it. Yep. <laughs> and so for me, there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just basically what you like, your taste, how you grew up with it. Like I said, some people put boiled eggs in their dressing. Some people put boiled eggs in their gravy. So it's just, some people put giblets in their gravy. They call it giblet gravy. Some people put meat in their dressing. Some people use duck. Some people use chicken. Some people use the turkey. So it's just whatever you like. Do I stir it or anything? Yep, you can, which is just another level Season. It smells great. I wish we had smell of vision. <laughs> All right, so while that's finishing uh, sauteing, I'm going to crumble up the cornbread that was already pre made. Is that something I could have done in the food processor? Yeah, but it's better to do it this By way. By hand? Right. Okay. Yeah. So the real trick to this recipe is have someone else help you. <laughs> It'll be done in half the time. <laughs> all right, so we've got all of that. Just 
cheese hands. I'm gonna add our stuffing, our bread mixture. Let's add our sage. It definitely smells like Thanksgiving in here. I'm gonna add about three tablespoons of sage. And add more or less, it's up to your taste. We're doing three tablespoons. All right, Kevin, I will need uh, a Oh, okay. All right, so this is good. This is ready to go. We can turn this off. Um, we're just doing enough dressing for one pan, one large pan. But most times when you do dressing, you do enough for two pans, you know, right? Guests and friends. And so, uh, but so today, let me see. Let's do this size pan. It's like a nine by thirteen. It looks like maybe. Yeah. So in this particular recipe, I'm going to add the uh, cream of celery. Right. So if you go ahead and add in the mirepoix. What is it called? Mirepoix, which is the holy trinity. Oh, is that Celery, what? Celery, bell, pepper, onion. Mirepoix. Yeah. That French. Yes. Can I have the spatula? Yes. And you get a workout because <laughs> I can tell you that uh, this pan is heavy. Cast iron. And that's what I cook my cornbread in most times. You don't have to have a cast iron, but... If somebody asks me what my favorite kitchen tool is, there's probably a lot, but spatulas up high. I love yeah. spatulas. They get everything out of the pan or the glass or the cup or whatever. Let's so start. Mix it right. All right. Now. Okay, hold on then. Let me see. Okay. Then we're going to add our stock. I always make homemade stock. What's in your stock? Chicken. The mirepoix. mirepoix. Celery, onion, bell, pepper. I also use carrots and garlic in it. Um, today we're going to use a bar, chicken broth. And then we're going to just add this as you continue to stir. Woo! You sure we can't use a machine for this? <laughs> this is heavy. <laughs> It smells great though. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's keep going. What are we preheating the oven to? 350. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the consistency I'm looking for is uh, too thick because it's gonna cook out some of the uh, liquid and the moisture. So I want to dry dress it. Oh, okay. Only Mark will get me to taste wet bread. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know if you get your seasoning right before you bake it. I get it, but it's still wet bread. Good. It is. I need just a tad more salt, but I like to add just enough so that we don't have to add any effort. There you go, that's it. This is an automatic, you know, grinder. That's what I'm trying to say. I think I got it at like Aldi or Lidl or one of those type of stores, but it's pretty cool. All right, okay, let's add our egg in. I know, I'm conservative. <laughs> I knew you was gonna say that because on the last video, y'all were like spraying a whole can. Of All right, that's good. And then we are ready to. All right. 
Oh, you're right. This takes more. Right. You want me to get another pan? Yes, get the other pan. This happened to make one and a half pans. The other good thing about this is that you can freeze it. You can cook it and freeze it, or you can freeze it as is and oh, take, be, take it out. That would be so helpful. Defrost it in the refrigerator. and uh, That would be helpful during the holidays yeah. when you have like multiple. One Thanksgiving, I had nine things to make. There is something satisfying about <laughs> cleaning a bowl with a spatula. Let's, let's stick it in the oven. Okay. And this is what it looks like. And I can't wait to taste it. We need to get grandma in here to taste right. it. Right. I'm gonna get her. All right, once again, this is another episode of Calvin's Kitchen with the chef, Mark Andre Norwood. Hope you enjoyed the music. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And Mark, maybe we can uh, do another dessert as well. Yeah, I look forward to it, whatever you say. Yeah, yeah. You you talked about on the German chocolate cake, the uh, banana pudding. Uh, right. What is it called? This is not your grandmother's banana pudding. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So hopefully we get that done soon. And everybody enjoy your holidays. And until next time, take care y'all. Bye. Bye-bye.